Hello everyone, it's Rahul, and today we are back because regional championships are officially back. We are about a week out from the first regional championship over in Brisbane, Australia. And after that, we've got Salt Lake City and then Liverpool. So three major regions of the world are seeing their first regional championship kick off in the, I guess, remainder of the 2022 season. Because, you know, we had this whole pandemic thing that happened. Um, so today I wanted to talk about all the simple things that you can do to prepare yourself for your first regional championship, whether you're a player that's been playing for years or a player that is a brand new to the scene, because I know that we have a lot of new friends joining us um, from the online circuit. So I wanted to prepare you guys for your first tournament. Now, I'm not going to talk about deck lists or like deck building and that kind of stuff in this video. That'll be for a separate video because I think that's a completely different point. And I will be talking about um, like putting everything in one backpack and bringing it to the event. It's a separate video as well, but I will also touch on that in this video. So keep an eye out for both of those um, coming up soon. And if you guys see anything that I missed or have any suggestions for anybody else, please leave it in the comments below. I'm sure anyone new to the game would appreciate it. Um, I had a lot of people leave wonderful, wonderful suggestions on both my Facebook and Twitter. You guys can also contribute to these kinds of things and help with these videos if you want to respond to there on my Twitter. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Now, regional championships are the second largest tournament that we can attend without needing an invitation, which, you know, the only invite regulated tournament is the world championships. Um, all Pokemon TCG events will use the, or regional championships will use the standard format this year. Sometimes there'll be expanded, sometimes there'll be, you know, other stuff, and VGC will be Sword and Shield. But uh, this year, for the remainder, it'll be just these. So, first things first. Gotta figure out your dates, gotta figure out where you're going. Book your flights, book your hotel. That's on you guys. I have a completely separate video. I'll link up here for you guys to click on to figure out cheaper flights, cheaper hotels, kind of when to book, how to plan. But now that you're on this website, where do you find this information on how to register? Now, it's a little bit deceiving because it's going to be hard to find stuff here. Like, you're not going to be able to find the registration link here, which is a little bit backwards. I'm not going to lie to you guys, but we will have other places to find them. Um, for example, your go-to place is going to be the RK9 Labs dashboard. RK9.gg is the best place to find where you're going to find stuff. So you're going to click on tournaments um, and you'll be able to find those regionals specifically. Like if you go to player dashboard here, you can find uh, stuff in general. There's the team challenge stuff here as well. And you'll be able to find um, everything here on your player dashboard. So for example, if I go to my player dashboard, I've already registered for Salt Lake City TCG Regional Championship. Now it's based on mountain time and all that stuff. So RK9 Labs is going to be your best friend for this tournament. You're gonna to register through this website. I've already done the registration process, so I can't really show you how to do it. It's very simple. You basically put in um, the vaccine information where you, you know, date, birthday, player ID. If you don't have a player ID, you can get one from the Pokemon website itself on the Play Pokemon program. Um, you will need a player ID to participate in these tournaments to register as part of the Play Pokemon program. Um, you will get all of those top to bottom after that. And then, well, uh, we will have all of these. And bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. You're registered and it'll show you here. And you can click on my information, which I have right here. I'm not going to scroll down or anything because I don't want you guys seeing my personal information in terms of registration. But your personal information will be down below. You'll have an email with all this information as well. And it'll show decklist submission will be open on March 14th, 2022. Uh, decklist RK9 Labs creator. We can click here to open up the RK9 Labs decklist creator. You can see some of the lists I have already saved from um, whatever lists. So when I would do this, I would be able to submit this. And there would be a checkbox here for Salt Lake City Regionals. And if any of the cards in here are red, for example, that means this list is legal for competitive play. And this list will kind of basically tell you the perfect way to you know submit your list. Uh, make sure your all your arts are correct for the Pokemon. Everything else does not actually matter. Um, just make sure you have the right card for that. And that'll be how you submit a deck list. Now, each list will have a certain time that you have to submit a deck list by. For example, for Salt Lake City Regionals, it'll be 7.30 a.m. Mountain Time on the Saturday of the event. So you have to make sure you do that. And then you can see the live roster when it is live of all the players who have submitted their deck list. This is also what they will be using to monitor whether or not you've submitted your deck list. You can, um, this will make it so you can have multiple deck list times, multiple things to do. And the first day of play will begin at 8 a.m. So make sure you guys are ready to be there and there will be some checks. Now, the COVID protocols are something we want to talk about as well. Uh, and the COVID protocols are something that were changed today. So up till today, you would need a uh, PCR or rapid test to participate in the event. That is no longer part of the um, uh, tournament requirement. So now that we don't need that anymore, you can just have to show up and bring your vaccine card. You have to be vaccinated both times 
And if it has been over seven months, seven months or over since you've gotten your last shot, you have to get boosted as well. Simple rules. That, that's the rules. You got to do it. So now you know how to do R39 Labs, all that stuff. So let's talk about the regional schedule. This is the website, pokeevent.com slash regional Salt Lake City 2022. Uh, I will leave it a link to the this in the description below, but you can just type in Pokemon Salt Lake Regionals. I, I am a little bit miffed that there is no link from any of this to this. I think there might be one on Arcanine Labs um, to Salt Lake City. Uh, and pairings also, sorry, Arcanine Labs will have our pairings right here. So when the tournament is actually happening, make sure to have Arcanine Labs open on your phone. There will probably be QR codes around the building to pull up pairings. And all you have to do is put in your player ID to search yourself up. And this makes it way easier for you to find your pairings rather than huddle around whatever paper pairings they post so you can get to your tables as efficiently as possible at the actual tournament. Here, here's the tournament details page. I believe this will take you there. Um, oh yeah, here, the tournament details page will show you exactly how much it is to play, how much it is to pay. There's a website that will take you there and the registration. So now that we're here on the actual website, this is where you'll actually register as well. You can go backwards here from Arcanine Labs or come here from Arcanine Labs. Um, TCG registration, VGC registration, and I'll show you what you get for the entry. Um, regional play mat supplies, blah, blah, blah. And then registration closes Saturday at 7.15 Mountain Time, which is 15 minutes before decklist. So I guess if you really want to wait till the last minute, you can, because that is quite literally 15 minutes before decklist, so you can do it. I just wouldn't recommend it. Now, there are some new COVID slash food requirements. We will be having to wear a mask during the entire time, so make sure you bring a mask and maybe an extra mask because they get kind of gross. Um, and there's a certain list of masks, like N95s, like regular cloth masks will not cut it. Um, and there will be people probably enforcing it. Judges will probably ask you. And they may have masks for you on site. I don't know. I can't confirm that. And all attendees may not consume food or beverage unless in a designated food or beverage area. So I'm assuming there's probably like a food area or like a food court area. Or they can ask you to walk. You can like walk outside and probably just like drink your water. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that's, that's as simple as that is. And so now let's go ahead and look at the schedule. That popped up in a different window. I did not expect that. Okay. Um, so you can check in on Friday. Friday, there the hall is open. You can check in on 8 a.m. on Friday. The morning of it looks like to go to your COVID protocols, your bag check, whatever. Get your stuff. Go back to your hotel. 11 a.m. the hall will open. There will be side events and vendors. I don't know exactly what those will be. They're not listed quite yet. So you can hang out at the venue from 11 to 6 p.m. on that Friday. Make friends. Kind of buy the last minute cards you need. Whatever. You know, get your COVID protocol checks done early. Check in early uh, and get that out of the way. Saturday morning, uh, I'm probably going to go Friday to get my check in done um, before 6 p.m. Just so I don't have to deal with it on Saturday morning because I assume Saturday morning there will be a line of some sort to kind of get through that COVID check. Uh, kind of get through that. Um, check-in process to pick up your stuff uh, as well. So Saturday morning, it's 6.30 a.m. COVID checks will happen. And then 7 a.m. hall opens. 7 to 7.30, make sure you know everything is submitted. And then 8 a.m. we'll have our players meeting. Or 8 a.m., I guess, pairings will be posted. And 8.30 is the players meeting. So this will give a little bit of time for players to kind of get adjusted what's going on. And we can get there. There is no allotted lunch break as it currently stands, it looks like. Um, but I do think there will probably be a lunch break or a dinner break considering the food protocols, but if there is no food uh, break in general, please be sure to pack some snacks. Please be sure to pack some water bottles. Make an eye out for like the nearest Starbucks or like the nearest restaurant or something nearby because that's going to be a very, very long day. We're going to be there until like 9, 10 p.m. So you do not want to be starving heading into the, the back half of the day. I make this mistake time and time again, even though I'm telling you guys not to make the same mistake. So I can tell you from firsthand experience that I have suffered greatly from not eating all day. Um, yeah, that's just how I can put it. Day two is very similar. If you make day two, uh, which is six two one, which is that many match points or above, 19 match points or above, you will come and you will play once again. Um, and there is for side events, there's swag that can be picked up at the side walls. Now, now that I've covered the main, oh, it says hall five doorways as well. Um, so you have to go through hall five to get a wristband. If you don't get a wristband, you can't even enter. So that's where the check-in process will happen. And that's how they will do it. It doesn't have anything about spectators at the current moment. Uh, but I believe there's a registration for spectators that they will have at some point. Now that I've covered all of those, let's talk about some of the more nuanced things. So table etiquette is something that people were talking to me about. Uh, best time to buy cards, all that kind of conversations. So if you're going, make sure you have a lot of your cards ahead of time because it's going to be very, very, very expensive to buy cards last minute. And I am telling you this personally because I've seen this time and time again where players will go to the vendors. I've done this personally and they will be upcharged to a certain point. And there's nothing you can really do about it. 
So make sure you buy your cards ahead of time. Make sure you have your physical cards. And if you want to buy something last minute, you can. I will not, um, you know, judge you for that. Like, you, it, it's something that happens. Make sure you have a deck box for your cards and possibly a backpack to have everything in. Just makes it easier to carry everything around. Uh, a play mat is also very recommended. This will all go in a separate video as well. I'll talk about it. Uh, make sure you have 60 sleeves and a backup set of sleeves and a couple of extra sleeves just in case something gets dinged up. Some, maybe you're a rough shuffler or whatever. Um, make sure to shower the morning of. Please, please, please shower for everyone else's hygiene's sake. Uh, make sure you have like a bottle of hand, hand sanitizer on you. There will be some at the venue as well. Have a personal bottle just in case. Have a mask. Have a secondary mask. Snacks and water going to be very crucial for you. Or if you're like me and just guzzle like energy drinks consistently throughout the day, make sure you've got those on you. Uh, yeah. Um, best way to, I guess, like prepare. Um, don't get crazy the night before and switch up your deck. Pull a full 180. Pull a full crazy move. Stick with what you know, stick, stay calm, get a good night's worth of rest. It is a very, very long day on day one. We will be playing from, you know, based on the times you have to wake up, we'll be there from like 7 a.m. almost to like, you know, after dinner. So it's going to be a very long day. Um, if anything, anything, anything happens, please do not be afraid to call a judge. Um, you're not going to get scorned. People are not going to yell at you. Just call a judge and they will help the situation as best as they can. You cannot, like, judges cannot reverse something after a game has happened. So just do it in the moment and if you're a parent by the way make sure you and your child have a meetup spot um, at the venue in case you know it's gonna be very hectic uh and it is often very frowned upon to be you know overlooking your child's match um you're gonna probably want to be away from the child let them play their games come to you after and talk about it a um, little bit hands off um I, I understand if you're a parent that wants to do something like that you can but the judges will ask you to step away from the play area pretty frequently so i'm giving you guys a heads up on that on top of that you cannot loiter in the play area specifically. So there's going to be like tables and stuff on the sides. Um, my favorite thing to do in between rounds is to simply just walk outside of the event, like not the venue, but the event hall itself and find like a little bit of more quiet place to just like gather my thoughts, have a meetup spot with my friends where it's not as crowded and, and not as loud. Uh, and you can keep track of pairings and timings because you can generally tell when everyone's starting to flock back in, pairings are probably up. Um, that's a little bit more risky, but take that as you will. Now, Stay calm. There's going to be nerves. Set your expectations realistically. And if it's your first regionals as a player, go have fun. Make sure you bring V-Star markers. Make sure you bring your poison burn marker. Um, I just use like coins for those things. Um, not my V-Star marker. I have like a random like Ugandan knuckles token. I'm not joking. It's actually what I'm going to be using. Um, so all of that is important to be there. Uh, finally, I'm going to talk about table etiquette. Um, a lot of players are new, and I want you guys to remember that as we're coming in to this regional championship circuit. Um, so please be kind. Please be nice. And if they ask you to explain what you're doing, what you are doing, please just do it. Um, I don't want people to come here and have their first regional experience be something soured because their opponent across the table is being a complete, you know, not going to say the word, but you know exactly what I'm putting there. Uh, talk to your opponents. Be friendly. Make some small talk banter. Obviously, gauge the situation if your opponent does not want to talk or something like that. You don't have to. Breaking the ice at the table is super hard, and I know that for newer players. Even for myself, it's a little bit difficult as being as experienced as I am. But, you know, ask where they're from, how their day is going. Uh, you don't have to pry into their tournament day so far. Just be like, how's your day been? Like, are you excited to be here in Utah? Like, where'd you come from? Like, something like that. Like, how are your friends doing? Like, are you excited to be at this table? Like, something like that. I don't know. Um, just something that isn't as crazy uh, that will, like, put them on edge. Uh, but make friends because this is the best place to make friends. A lot of my lifelong friends I met at regional championships and uh, some of them I'm going to be part of their wedding. Some of them I've known, like, I, I don't know, they're, they're lifelong friends to me. So make sure you make some friends. Uh, don't leave the experience soured for yourself because you uh, were not able to do that. But besides that, I don't know, go have fun. If there's any questions that I can also help answer, please leave them in the comments. I will answer every single question to the best of my ability. Um, bring your vaccine card, bring your deck. Don't leave your deck at home. That's that's crucial. Don't leave your vaccine card at home. That's crucial. Uh, bring an ID. Sorry, you need to bring a form of ID to kind of prove that it is you. Um, driver's license, permit, school ID. I think all those kind of count. Uh, bring one of those. Passport, I guess. Birth certificate. I don't know why would you bring those. That seems a little bit excessive. But if you need to, do it. Um, so besides that, I think I've covered everything I, I wanted to cover in this video. I think I've covered everything that a newer player should be doing heading into this video we will cover meta and all that stuff later down the line but above all, above all else have fun guys i know salt lake city bridgeman and liverpool are going to be new for a lot of players uh and wherever you're playing from have a fantastic time just enjoy yourself and you know soak in the full experience it's going to be it's going to be something crazy it's going to be a lot of fun it's going to be a lot of pressure it's going to be a very long day 
but you guys can do it. I believe in everybody. And I don't know if you guys see me there, please feel free to ask me for a picture. Feel free to like, feel free to like ask to talk to me. I will not mind. Obviously read the room a little bit if I'm like in a big group or something, or if I'm off pacing with my headphones in timing, timing is everything. But if I'm just chilling and you're just like, Hey, uh, Rahul, I, I want to, you know, say hi, feel, feel free to, I, I always like to talk to people. I always like to, you know, uh, interact with everybody and, uh, it would honestly make my day. Uh, so please, please, please feel free to. And I will try to be vlogging and stuff as well. So uh, I just have to remember to film. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. If I did, please let me know in the comments below. Um, and have fun at your first regionals. Let me know where you're going.